Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and I suspected this would happen. Remember how I said, well, there's obviously four pre-written endings to the storyline, and the one that we heard was the Sun Empire one, because they won the seemingly rigged geocaching and voting event, but there is a golden rule at every self-important company that thinks their farts don't stink. You don't just create art and then not show it to anybody, and they think these stories are art. So, I present to you the totally accurate, not changed at all, alternate endings. Or as Wizards puts it, enjoy these looks at what could have been. And actually, I mean, it is interesting. I, I, you know, this is why you don't write forked D&D custom modules. Because, um, your party's not going to see half of it. It's, and then you wrote this clever interactions that they're never going to meet the character, they're never going to fight the battle, you took all the time designing it, and... Just don't do not do decision trees. Just don't do it. But in this case, this is what they wanted to do. I'd say this is different. And I think people were wondering, you know, what if? Like, what would it be like if? So let's what if ourselves into the River Heralds, a.k.a. the all-natural hipsters who are probably self-diagnosed gluten intolerant. Tishana watched as Huatli departed on the back of the Elder Dinosaur. So we're going way back. This is before she even planeswalked and then came back. So that's actually interesting. I guess Tishana just kind of stuck around in this instance. So she's just looking around. She's like, wow, this place is really empty. Like, there's occasionally a bird chirping, but like, that's it. <laughs> it would be a shame for this place to remain so empty. So she had pulled out her smartphone. She jumped on Facebook. Yeah, it's going to be that kind of story, by the way. And she just starts inviting people. She's just like, hashtag party at Araska. Although it says that every tile in the floors and every fleck of gold in the walls pulsed with ancient energy, it made Tishana feel uneasy. Not her crippling social anxiety disorder, no, it was definitely the magical gold. Probably a static buildup too in the walls, cause like the city moved and can kind of build up a charge. So this racist idiot goes on a racist tirade about, um, humans were mercurial and finicky. They lacked decision-making skills. They supplanted reliability for impulsivity. Um, some of us are decisive and logical, FYI. <laughs> That's not how I would describe the merfolk, though. Uh, most worrying of all, humans' uh, success seemed mostly to come from one-upping one another in a series of dares. You've been watching too much jackass, okay? Not everybody's like that. Now watch as I eat 37 Tide Ponds in a row. <laughs> there go the ads. The ads have just left Oraska, everybody. So she concludes it with, by and large, they were an exhausting lot. Well, piss off too, you racist bitch. Oh, oh, get this line. This is why I didn't want the merfolk to win, because they are so like this. Oraska may have been made by them, but it did not belong to them. No, that's how it works, actually. You build something, it's yours. So apparently uh, Tishana like taps into the magical power of Araska just because, because story, I think. I'm pretty sure that's why. And uh, she commands the elementals that stood guard at each entrance to the city that we've never heard of before ever uh, to only let merfolk in and attack all non-merfolk. So Tishana sends out an invite to the rest of the shapers and all their people and all that. She's like, hey, come to Araska. It's totally awesome. Party's going to be lit. Uh, and then she's like, okay, th then by tomorrow we'll come to a resolution because Araska may have been built by the Sun Empire, but the land below it belonged to them. Okay, hopefully that holds up in court. It won't. I'm surprised these hipster naturalist idiots even have a concept of ownership, to be honest. She even started making plans to rename it. I mean, what an entitled bitch. Seriously, I am glad these douchebags didn't win. No wonder they're unblockable. Their arrogance and stupidity is unblockable too, apparently. The story literally ends with the statement, We were hair first, with first in bold. Yeah, great. You should have had the military power to uh, hold it then. All right, Legion of Dusk. How are they going to turn this around? And I mean very literally because they left Araska walking in the opposite direction under the command of Elaindra, who is pissed at Vona. Vona's pissed at her. In fact, the story starts with Vona scowled as she followed Saint. El oh, I keep calling her Elaindra, I think. It's Elaine-da. So, like, literally all night through the whole walk, it said that Maverin Fane was pleading for forgiveness. Like, come on, get a life. In fact, they say, pathetic, Vona thought to herself. Damn right. Ready for the worst, I don't, I don't know what you even call this, plot device? Just ready for the worst writing you've ever seen. Elena paused on the path. Her ears were full of bird songs and her nose was full of the stench of damp earth. Everything about the wilderness repulsed her. 
Uh, right there with you, sister. Uh, but she couldn't help the feeling that it was not yet time to leave. The immortal sun was gone, but Araska still remained. It was a city literally made of gold. She couldn't just leave it unattended because story. So you're walking for hours. You made up your mind, and then you're just like, you know what? And then just turn turn that train around. Are you serious? Oh, wait, I got that wrong because this is really crappy writing. Vona was thinking that. So Vona, St. Elena called from up ahead, um, and she's like, you are lost in thought. Speak your peace. I don't think that's the spelling of peace that you used in that saying, but I don't know for sure. Um, she just straight up says, I'm not going to return to Torah Zone, a.k.a. Uh, uh, space Spain, I guess. Empty handed. Let's go to space Japan. Kamigawa's awesome. And so Maverin's like, we're not returning empty handed. We found St. Elena. <laughs> hey, it's not nothing. And so, of course, Vona reminds them that they were assigned to go find the Immortal Sun. Like, Queen Miralda was like, go do that. Oh, and apparently take over um, Araska, which they're not doing. So Elena says, then go. Claim Araska for your own. I will sail to the east, which is probably the direction of uh, Torasone. So Vona turns around towards Araska, and uh, Maverin Fane continues to follow St. Elena. So this will be a short fight. Oh, wait, I forgot. Back in the real story, everybody left. So she gets there. Total moonlight. I mean, it's been like hours and hours and hours. And uh, she just gets to a completely empty city and says, it is mine. Yeah, I guess. I mean, because the other people are such morons, they left. Not really an accomplishment. And then, of course, I got to read this part. The gold looks strange in the moonlight. Its yellow hues were gone, replaced with pale metallic glow. Um, That's not what gold looks like in the moonlight. That's not even how light waves work. <laughs> anyway, so she's like, okay, um, I feel something moving through the city, but I don't care because it's mine and I claimed it. Hey, want some proof that this is rigged? I'm going to read this verbatim. No joke, not making this up. Something rumbled behind her. Vona stowed her smile and turned around. She couldn't help but gasp. Above her stood an immense dinosaur, its teeth as long as her fingers and its claws as sharp as her blade. A long strand of saliva dripped from its mouth down onto her helmet. Vona did not have time to scream as the dinosaur snapped her up in, uh, into its jaws. And Araska was quiet once more. So, I guess with the vampire ending they still don't really get the city. <laughs> they wouldn't have even really been like a city. I mean, everybody hates Vona because she's such a nut bar, but um, like th if this would have been the real ending, can you imagine that? <laughs> it's almost like a really crappy cliffhanger where just nobody gets it. it it's, it's just odd. But you know, the Legion of Dusk is supposed to be the Spanish conquistadors and they're evil racists, which actually isn't that far off historically. And you can't have the villain win in the end. So let's take a look at the Brazen Coalition, a.k.a. Breaches and Malcolm and all the other guys who are totally awesome but not Angrath. Seriously, where is Angrath's crew in all this? They, they never showed up. He just is like, I'm going in solo. So uh, Breaches is riding on Malcolm the Siren because he's flying away out the window, if you recall. And uh, <laughs> Breaches is screaming, Revenge! Rescue mission, Revenge! And Breach is like, find captain! And, uh, 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 what's his face? Malcolm says, well, the captain's orders are to let her go, Breach, as Jay said the same. So they're still just cruising around in the air, and Breach just notices, um, Araska's empty, everybody left. And then Malcolm's like, wait, everyone? And, and Breach just says, everyone but us. And then Malcolm goes, everyone but us. And then it literally says, one week later. I can't do the French guy from Spongebob. I just can't do it. There's no way that guy's actually French anyway. Uh, it says Azor's sanctum was littered with tables full of ale and playing cards and pirate songs. See, this is why I wanted the pirates to win. Y'all right got gold plated walls, open an illegal casino. I mean, that's just what you do. So they moved all their pirate treasure from like everywhere to Araska because why not? So they said they had golden jewels stacked to the ceiling. Damn. I do wonder how the pirates' economy works. Like, who do they buy, sell, and trade with? Like, where would they spend the money? Is there a pirate country? Like, is is there... I, I never got this. You can't just have pirates. You gotta have an England. I mean, like, I thought maybe culturally they were all pirates, but where are all the pirate children? We obviously know where the pirate women are. They're all over the damn cards. 
But, like, where's the cities? Where's the societies? Even if they're nomadic but also live on pirate ships, like, they got distributed bases and stuff, which I think that's pretty much how it works, is they, they've got their little, like, uh, floating base things built out of a bunch of broken ships, and that's just, like, where they live, but if they don't produce anything and only steal, how does the economy work? Okay, I'm getting way deep into this one. I'm just saying, you gotta have farmers and producers. You can't just buy from other people because if they want you dead because you're not allies with them and you keep stealing from them, they're not gonna sell stuff to you. <laughs> the pirates and the vampires constantly fight. I don't think they're buying anything from the merfolk. And um, the Sun Empire and the pirates, I doubt they get along or sell or buy to each other or anything like that because it sounds like they're the ones that are robbing. Oh, so anyway, the pirates made Malcolm and Breaches co-emperors. That's right. The most adorable blue monkey pirate ever is now Emperor, <laughs> which this is the best ending. This is just like clearly the number one greatest ending ever. So literally they just like walk in, everybody cheers and they're like, let's play cards. And that's it. I mean, even though it's like kind of weak, it's like, it's awesome. This is the awesomest ending ever. So you all voted wrong. I'm ashamed of, of everybody in the entire community. But at least the vampire douchebags didn't win, which it sounds like even in the story, they literally couldn't have won. So that's hilarious. Elena wasn't coming back. I'm just saying. Wait a minute. Somebody's going to say it. Okay. Remember in the polls, instead of the sun empire, some of them just said dinosaurs. A dinosaur ate the vampire and a dinosaur was alive and wandering around Raska. So technically in the vampire ending... The, quote, dinosaurs still won control of Veraska, which is hilarious. Unfortunately, that wouldn't end well because dinosaurs can't recognize themselves in a mirror. They're not nearly intelligent enough. I mean, only extremely intelligent apes and I believe dolphins and some uh, elephants can do that. That's it. So all the raptors and stuff would just see their reflection in the gold walls and just attack themselves and scare themselves off because they'd be like, oh, this is weird and indestructible enemy and they'd all just run away. So I've thoroughly ruined that ending for everybody, but which one did you like the best? And if your answer is anything other than the pirates, then you're wrong. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't hear, some uh, famous sci-fi author lady is writing the Dominaria storyline. So uh, look forward to that, I guess. I don't know anything about her or her work. Since Wizards hired her, God, I hope she's not some SJW feminist, you know, ex-Marvel comic book writer that got fired or something. I, I just, I'm too scared to even look. Hopefully it's not a disaster. But let's be hopeful that it's not the R&D narrative team writing these. Although they did do a pretty good job with Rick's. But anyway, I'll see you guys next video.